mikrofon tak tak berfungsi eh. Ah tak dah tadi saya pergi toilet tak. Alright. Hafizul. Hafizul selalu dia buka dia punya video. Tapi hari ni dia tak masuk. Dia drop ke? Azlan nanti kalau Hafizul masuk bagi tahu eh. Kalau tidak attendance dia kosong. Alright. Kita datang. Okay. Eh kenapa keluar dua pula? You nampak dua slide ke? Nampak. Dua slide? Satu je. Ah, tak, satu je. Tak nampak saya nampak dua. Dia keluar dua depan saya. Okay tak apa. <laughs> uh, mana sudah tu? Kita apa? Satu slide show. Okay. Slide bergerak tak? Bergerak. Okay, okay. Right. Okay, good morning again. Uh, today we we are going to, uh, apa tu? Uh, second, our second lecture. Okay, uh, before that, uh, just to announce here, yeah, uh, this is with regards to ornamental class. Uh, Kak Cika, uh, I hope she was able to get some uh, beta blue stock for the group yang tak ada ya. Yeah? Okay, when you come to the lab, please check ya. Yeah? Okay, because uh, some of you yang tak ada yang tak ada ikan apa induk jantan atau betina, you go and check in the lab. Alright, so I already show you how to uh, select male and female. I hope you don't make a mistake ya. Yeah? Okay. After the class, probably you come to the lab, uh, to endo lab, okay, and check. Boleh tak? Yang ambil kelas fundamental dengan saya, ya? Yeah? Alright? Okay, Rata. Okay. Uh, I think siapa semalam tu? Umar kan? Umar ada lagi group yang uh, tak ada induk kan? Uh, you you go and check, alright? Okay, Rata. Okay. Uh, Alright. Okay. So before we go in further for lecture two, okay, today we're going to cover reproductive biology of fish. Okay. Before we go into uh, go into deeper for this lecture, so I would like to give some uh, apa tu? Uh, give definition for some terminology. Alright. The terminology that I'm going to use often. Okay. Fish, of course, you know, right? Okay. Uh, fish, uh, aquatic animal, okay, uh, what we call that, cold-blooded, but however, I think recent finding show that uh, fish, there are certain species of fish, they are warm-blooded as well, all right, uh, they are warm-blooded as well, okay, so last time the terminology fish was uh, considered as cold-blooded, right, but then I think few years back, there was a uh, finding showing that there are some uh, species of fish uh, which are warm-blooded as well, okay? Not only cold-blooded. So fish can come with scale, without scale. Uh, fish with uh, gills, you know, some fish with lungs. If you take ichthyology, I believe, uh, I think maybe most of you have taken ichthyology. So I think... Uh, you cover the the many group of fishes, uh, those cartilage, bony fishes, uh, lung fishes, the ancient fishes, right? So I'm not going to cover that one. I'm going to cover part that relevant for, for this course only. Okay? Okay, you know what is fish? And then uh, they live in aquatic environment. Okay? And then... Uh, well, of course, they depend on the aquatic environment for living, yeah? All right? Then next is fry, okay? Fry, fry is, uh, fry bukan goreng, yeah? Not frying, uh, cooking food, yeah? Fry, the meaning of fry here is, uh, hold on, hold on. Give me uh, one minute. I just reply, ada, ada urgent message. 
Je sais pas. Je ne sais pas. Je ne sais pas. Okay. <clears throat> right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Uh, fry. Meaning of fry is uh, 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 what we call it is a uh, fish at a stage where uh, I mean you you don't write baby fish. Huh? So if you want to say something, baby fish just talking is okay. But uh, fry, the meaning of fry is that they are fish at early stage, okay, uh, where they start feeding. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. They are uh, fish at early stage where they start feeding. Okay, uh, when we do breeding, right? We do breeding, the fish spawn and then they fertilizes the eggs. So once the eggs get fertilized, they develop. So that stage we call uh, embryonic development, embryo. After they fertilize, they develop, they're, but they're still inside the eggs. So that's what we call embryo. But if the eggs didn't get fertilized, the eggs get released, but you didn't get fertilized. We cannot call it embryo because inside the, the embryo didn't develop because no fertilization, no development. All right. So uh, there is an embryonic stage. Uh, you can see the embryo inside the egg. Upon hatching, we can call these fishes as hatchling. Upon hatching, you can call it hatchling or we call it larvae. Okay, class? Larvae. Okay? So, larvae and hatchling are the stage of where they just hatch and the fish do not depend on food. I mean, do not feed. They tak makan lagi. Do not feed. Okay? So, uh, they depend on the yolk as supply of food for them to grow. So, this stage will carry out for two or three days and sometimes maybe even longer for certain species of fish. But kela, kela, if the yolk, uh, they depends on the yolk. Yeah? When the, the eggs fertilize, I mean, the eggs hatch, the embryo hatch, they become hatchling or larvae. Okay, this larvae stage, uh, they do not feed, but they need to develop. So they, when they get, they hatch, they have what we call yolk. This yolk will be the supply of food for the period from the hatching until uh, day three. Day three for most of the fish, uh, two to three days they will uh, they can they will start feeding. So they need to depend on the yolk. Yeah. Okay. So when we do uh, we consider X quality, right? So uh, in assessment of X quality. So when we get a bigger size egg, meaning that the quality is better. Because bigger size eggs, it reflect on this. It will have a bigger yolk. All right. So during the early development, they depends on this yolk. Yeah. So uh, 
So during after when after they hatch, they not able to eat, but they need to grow. They need to develop their mouth, uh, their digestive system, and other parts of the organ for them to start functioning. Okay, they cannot eat upon hatchling upon hatching until day two or day three. Okay, so like kela kela take about five to six days, depending on the. Uh, size of the eggs, yeah, okay. So kela will take longer time. There are other species that even take longer than that, yeah. All right. So uh, like arowana, they 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 will not get depleted very fast. But arowana is not a food fish. I uh, just give example. All right. Okay. Okay. Fry stage is after. Uh, after the yolk is completed and the fish depend on the Hafizun tak masuk lagi eh Tak ada lagi doktor Tak ada, dia tak ada time class eh Siapa? Mana suruh slide kan? Slide saya dah hilang You nampak slide saya lagi ke? Tak ada slide. Kenapa? Kenapa dia hilang kan? Hilang kan? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, did she go? Huh? Ah, okay, okay. Kak Sengah kejap kan? Nampak dah? Nampak dah? Nampak, ha? nampak, nampak. Nampak eh? Dia hilang tadi. Okay. Uh, okay. So you have to be familiar with the terms ya. Yeah? When we talk about fry, they are, they are fishes that ha after hatching but after they completed the yolk absorption. So at fry stage, they need to feed. You need to feed them. Usually, fry stage start after three uh, at uh, at the end of day two or day three at the beginning of day three. Okay, it depends. So, bila kita buat breeding tu kan kita kena check every day upon hatching from from after the hatching kita tengok dia ada yolk, they still survive. Second day kita tengok yolk makin kecil. Then the third day kita tengok yolk hampir habis. Okay, bila yolk dah hampir habis tu, you boleh letak sedikit makanan. Okay, jangan tunggu sampai yolk betul-betul habis. Yeah, okay. So, sometimes the yolk will finish uh, at the end of day two. That's why I say what, when you do breeding, after the eggs hatch, you need to check the progress daily. And feeding, feeding need to be done daily or so. Okay, three times a day, yeah, for early stage. All right, and then uh, fry. Everybody know what is fry already. So, this is the stage after they finish the larvae stage, um, uh, they have fully absorbed the yolk and they start feeding. Yeah. Okay, what is brood stock? Many people make mistake uh, uh, when I ask them what is brood stock. Afrina, what is brood stock, Afrina? Afrina? Uh, is it like... Uh... Macam mana dia dari awal stop banyak-banyak macam tu? Okay. Anybody? Thank you Afrina. Tak apa saya cuba orang lain. Anis Izzatul? Um, dia macam uh, animals untuk breeding. Ya. Yeah. Ada sikit tu? Tak, tak sure. Tak sure. Okay, tak apa. Thank you, Anis, okay. uh, for trying. Okay. So, class, okay. Uh, to be exact, brew stock are fishes that can uh, uh, can produce eggs and sperm and this egg and sperm can can get fertilized the egg the, sorry the sperm can fertilize the eggs 
and the eggs can develop, can can uh, uh, can hatch and produce viable young. Okay, viable hatchling. Okay, kalau ikan tu boleh keluarkan telur, boleh keluarkan sperm. Kita cuba fertilize, dia tak boleh, dia tak fertilize. So tak ada ikan yang apa? Tak ada hatchling, tak ada embryonic development, tak ada hatchling. Okay, those you cannot call brush stock. Calon sahaja. After they get married, okay, and can you call the the couple that get married? Are trying to have kids but unsuccessful. Can you call them parents? No. No. Of course, human is different. Human can adopt. Okay, so they can kind of still can we call parents? But I'm talking about the the physical sense whereby when they do not produce survival, surviving offspring, anak yang dihasilkan. Uh, that means you cannot call them parents. You cannot call papa, you cannot call mama because they've got no kids. Same with fish. When we call bruce stock, they can reproduce. Okay? So the fishes that you buy from the farm, uh, you, want to, uh, you want to use them for breeding, those are your, uh, apa tu? you intend to make them into bruce stock. You call them blue stock when you can get sperm and eggs successfully from them, and this <coughs> sperm can fertilize eggs, and the eggs can develop, and they can hatch. Yeah, they can hatch. So if they are uh, successful to have survival, surviving offspring, ada anak yang terhasil, there's tak kesalah hatchling ke larvae ke fry. Tapi ada anak yang menetas, telur tersebut menetas. This mean dia ada anak. So you can actually call them brewstock already. Whether it's good or not, we don't know ya. Okay? Ya? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good brewstock, bad brewstock. Brewstock that dia punya, uh, apa itu? Dia punya hatching, maybe very low. Okay? But they are still brewstock if they ada produce anak yang hidup. Alright? Uh, if they are dia tak tak boleh keluarkan sperm, tak ada eggs, uh, apa lagi tu, uh, tak dapat hasilkan anak, you cannot call them blue stock yet. Itu calon sahaja. Okay? Faham tak? Faham tak? Faham, faham. Faham ya? Yeah? Okay. So some people, they call them breeders as well. They call them breeders. Tapi kalau dalam terminologi ikan, aa, uh, Usually kita pakai blue stock lah. Tapi kalau animal kadang-kadang uh, kambing, lembu, dia guna the words breeder. Okay, breeder. Alright, <coughs> alright. Gonad. Belum habis lagi terminologi ni panjang nak terangkan gonad ni. I mean, terminologi ni. Okay, what is gonad? Somebody can help me. Muas, Ahmad Muas. Reproduction organ lah. Reproductive organ, muas. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, reproductive organ. So, uh, gonad adalah reproductive organ. So, uh, gonad can be ovary, can be uh, testis. Remember last week you potong ikan? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you look at the gonad. Gonad is can be either male or female. Okay, this means female gonad, you will have ovary. Male gonad, you will have testes. All right? Okay, it's reproductive organ. So it can be uh, testes, it can be ovary. <clears throat> okay, then gamet. Gamet ni tak biasa lah ya. Gamet is actually referring to uh, kita ada male gamet, kita ada female gamet. 
Kalau male gamete is referring to sperm. Kalau female gamete is referring to eggs. Yeah. Or scientific term you can call it ovum. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, breeding. Of course, I think everybody know what is breeding. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, paham kan apa tu breeding? Mana Azlan? Azlan. Apa yes, tu? Yes, Breeding. Uh, the process where uh, a female and a male fish uh, reproduce for uh, in order to have uh, fries. Okay. Actually, breeding do not really require uh, proper terminology. Breeding, yeah, just uh, uh, spawning or. Uh, dalam ikan kan kita panggil spawning kan, okay? Uh, whereby uh, uh, the fish breed to reproduce, okay? To continue their uh, apa kita kata uh, generation, alright? Okay? So fry production, I think last week saya dah terangkan, okay? Okay, fry production is uh, is a process whereby it involve uh, breeding, fine production involves breeding, spawning of fish, uh, apa tu? fertilization and hatching and until uh, uh, the fry feeding until the end they are, they are cultured until reach certain size for you to uh, culture them in farms. Or for you to sell it to farmers, yeah, okay. Those are fry production. So fry production is actually a little bit more complicated because in order to produce fry, you need to have uh, brood stock. Okay, you need to have brood stock. You need to do breeding for them. I mean, you need you need uh, you need to do breeding. Okay, let them spawn. Then they have survival of spring. Then after that, you need to culture this one until certain stage okay let's say one month or two months until fingerlings until juvenile then you sell to farmers okay that is called fry production so this class is about fry production yeah okay <clears throat> Boleh class all right okay last week you have dissected dissected fish during your lab remember Okay, you have dissected fish in your lab. Okay, uh, you can uh, apa tu? Uh, this diagram uh, uh, is this is uh, I think this is trout. I think this is trout. No, this is salmon. All right, this is salmon. Okay, so it's similar to your uh, tilapia. Anyhow. I do not really require you to, to identify the other organs. The most important organ for my class is the testis. I'm sorry, is the gonad. Either the ovary, okay, or the testis, okay. So remember last week when you dissect the fish, I asked you to find the gonads. First, you need to identify the fish before you actually dissect them to see whether you can actually guess the the sex whether it's a male or female okay without cutting the fish so then after that in order to confirm it you dissect the fish okay then you you open up and see whether it has ovary or whether it has testes okay so the location of gonad there is either testes ovary will be here okay so you can see in tilapia there are two opening right Behind there, there are two opening. Okay, this is anal fin, yeah? So the the first opening is the anus, where the feces come up. The the behind opening, okay. The first opening is in front, is the anus. The behind opening is the opening of uh, the genital papilla, and in most cases, the opening of genital papilla is being shared together with the urinary duct, yeah. Uh, together with the urinary duct is it fused together all right okay but for female i think it's separated all right uh, for male yes it fused together 
I will show you the diagram later, yeah? So basically the location uh, of the gonad will be here. And usually you will have a pair. One is on the left, one is on the right, okay? Uh, if you're doing a gonadal study, if you dissect a lot of fish, sometimes you find some fish, the gonad is developed, some is undeveloped, yeah? Some you cannot identify whether it's male or female gonad, okay, because it's undeveloped. Although the size, they have achieved the size, but the gonad has not developed. So uh, that's why sometimes when the gonad has not developed, for you to identify the fish externally is also difficult, right? Okay. Okay, the reproductive uh, tract of fish, of fish here, yeah? okay, as I mentioned just now, the male usually, uh, the reproductive tract, the, the, the uh, ducting, okay, they share uh, with the urine uh, duct. Okay, so they, they meet together, all right? Why, why I need to tell you this, okay? Uh, in some cases where you strip fish, right? Uh, it is better for you to release the urine first before you strip the sperm, okay? Is this better you strip, you, you release the urine first before you uh, strip the sperm, okay? So uh, I think... Maybe in the class, uh, if you all remember, uh, when we have fish, uh, ask me to, to show to you how you can actually uh, release the urine. Yeah? Okay? You, actually, it's very easy. You take the fish, say this is the fish. I give you an example. My hand is a fish. Okay? Uh, you hold the fish. So you have the genital opening here. Say you have genital opening here. So what you do, because uh, uh, the urine is just beside the gonad. So what you do, you do not strip the, the, the urine out. No. Because when you strip, like you do the, uh, you strip the sperm, the sperm will come out together with urine. So what you do, this is the genital opening. So the example, this is the fish. My hand is a fish. So this is the genital opening here. Say for example, I give you example, huh? Okay, you know, you see the black dot there? Okay, for example, there is genital opening. Okay, so the fish, the tail is here. This is the genital opening, the one I marked with the black color. Okay, what you do, you put your thumb, take your thumb, press slightly just above the genital opening. Press with your thumb, press. Then you notice that the urine will come up. The urine is usually either translucent, uh, sometimes yellowish, all right? Okay, so you just press your thumb until there's no more urine come out and you wipe the genital opening, then only you do stripping for the fish, all right? Okay, class? Okay. Okay, okay. why this is important? Okay, I tell you. Uh, you have to understand the, the, the characteristic of fish sperm. I mean, not only fish, other sperm as well. I, I will go into detail later. But then, uh, basically, fish sperm, they can last for 60 to 120 seconds. One to two minutes only they can last. All right? Okay. Upon sleeping, uh, whereby if you do not release the the sperm yet, of course you still can get the sperm. If you do, sorry, if you do not release the urine, you still can get the sperm. So this, but the sperm will come up together with your urine. And this urine not only will activate the sperm, okay, at the spot once it makes, okay, and then uh, it reduces the lifespan of the sperm. All right? And also when you mix the sperm with the eggs, it contaminate the eggs as well, all right? It contaminate the eggs as well. So I advise you, although some people, they, they do not understand this because uh, if, if people, uh, sometimes they teach you how to do breeding, they do not really show you the detail on this. They just, okay, this, they say, 
after you inject the fish, the fish is ready. You can collect the eggs. You strip the, the sperm from the male and mix with the eggs. All right? Some people do not even tell you you need to pass the fish before breeding. Before we catch the fish, you need to pass them 24 hours. Let's say you want to breed them tomorrow, uh, to take out from the tank. Okay? Uh, so you want to choose the fish tomorrow and inject the fish tomorrow. Today, you do not feed the fish already. You pass them. So that to reduce fishes from when, when you do the breeding, uh, or especially when you do stripping, uh, you reduce the contamination from feces. Yeah? So you do not. And also, if you uh, keep the fish fasting, you, they, got, they are empty stomach, there will be less stress. Okay? There will be less stress when you handle them for breeding. All right? Okay. Uh, female have separate opening for urine and also reproductive uh, system. Yeah? Okay? So, uh, most female fish, they have uh, uh, no site, no, no place to, to, to keep the baby. Okay? Uh, life bearer in, in example like stingray, uh, what do you call it? Stingray and uh, what do you call it? shark, yeah, cartilaginous fish. Stingray shark, they are life bearer. Okay, those are food fish. Uh, like the most common fish that you see life bearer are this uh, guppy, molly, that is ornamental fish, yeah. Those are life bearer. Life bearer mean ikan tu beranak ya, dia bukan bertelur. So life bearer usually they keep the young inside, so they have uh, they carry pregnancy, all right. So uh, but most fishes they do not have, okay. They do not have. Uh, they do. They are not life bearer, okay. Except for this uh, shark and race, okay. And they do not have site for the development of young. They have only the gonads, okay, uh, which contain eggs or ovum, open release, uh, then the gonad will be empty. All right? Okay. I want to show you here the diagram of the, uh, okay, the urinary system as well as the gonads. Okay, the first diagram here, okay, so remember just now I mentioned that uh, the, Male gonad, okay. This is this is the male gonad. This is the testis, and this is the uri, uh, This is the kidney, okay. So this is the urinary duct, yeah. So they meet together at the opening, okay. They meet together as the exit. They meet together. So when you strip the the testis, you strip the testis, and at the same time when you press going down, okay. So the urine also will come out together. Yeah, the urine. So uh, the urine, uh, uh, one, not, not good. They are not, they are not so good effect of the urine when they come out together with the sperm. They will activate the sperm, okay, before the sperm mix with the eggs. And uh, when they come out together with sperm, then go inside the ball, they will contaminate the eggs as well. Okay, during fertilization. Okay, this is for male. And uh, this is for female, yeah? Okay, this is for female. So this is the ovary. Can you see? The urine, uh, this is the ure uh, kidney. So the uh, ur urinary opening and the, uh, what we call that, oviduct or the uh, reproductive uh, opening for the female, okay, is separate. It's separate, yeah? Okay? So, you do not really uh, face problem of uh, the eggs contaminated with the, uh, this, uh, the, the urine. Alright? Understand, class? <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, gonads. Okay, we go to gonads now. Gonads. They are reproductive organ that produce sex cell. So, uh, female gonad you call ovary, male gonad you call testis. 
Okay, the gonad they produces sperm. There is the gamete. Oh, sorry, the testis produces sperm. Sperm is the gamete. We call it the male gamete. The female, uh, the ovary of the female produces eggs. Or, or also you can call ovum. These are the female gametes. Eggs or ovum are the female gametes. Yeah? <clears throat> okay. I think I did mention, I'm not so sure I did. I mentioned last week or not during lab. There are some group of fishes, they have two sex in one body. Yeah, I did mention. I mentioned about terubu. Remember? During lab. Okay. Terubu is our local fish. It's a, a, a brackish water fish. Okay. Uh, I think this is very popular in Sarawak, yeah, Terubo. Okay. Uh, they live in Aswari. They have male and female gonad in the same body. Okay. This is, we call that ovotestis. Okay. Yeah. Combination of male and female gonad in one body. In most cases, it's abnormal. <coughs> But then there are certain group of fishes, certain species of fishes, they have two, uh, they have two gonads, they have the male and female gonads, they mean they have testes and they have ovary in the same body. This this term, these species you call them hemaprodites. Yeah. Uh, or uh, the the characteristic is hemaproditism. Okay. Very good example, like as I mentioned the other day, uh, is ikan terubuk. Oh, okay, uh, your sea bass and also your grouper. Okay, grouper, sea bass, ikan terubuk, they have my products. They have two organs in one body. Yeah, they have two, uh, sorry, they have two gonads, both gonads in one body. However, the function of these two gonads may differ depending on the species. Some species, uh, they have, uh, I will go into detail after this, this uh, program hemaprodites. Okay. Anyway, uh, before I go further for the hemapro, uh, hemaproditism, okay, I just want to let you know fertilization for fishes, yeah, for fishes, uh, external meaning that when the fish breed or spawn in the wild or when you do breeding for them uh, what actually happened the fishes releases the eggs and then uh, the, the female releases the eggs and the male releases the sperm on top of the eggs in order to fertilize the eggs that is what we call external fertilization meaning that the gametes or the, the eggs and the sperm are released outside of the fish body, okay? And for it to get fertilized. So fertilization occur outside of the fish body. So this is external fertilization, yeah? Most fishes, they are having external fertilization. Uh, but for shark and ray, okay, these fishes, they give birth to young. So... Fertilization occur internally inside the female, yeah, inside the female, except for, except for, uh, except for what? Uh, seahorse, seahorse, yeah. see the thing didn't come to me, okay, yeah, seahorse, except for seahorses, okay, so uh, what happened is that uh, uh, the the one that give birth is the male. Not the female, yeah, for seahorse. Seahorse is ornamental, yeah, it's not for fish. Although some people they they eat seahorse for medicinal uh, benefits, yeah, they say, uh, macam macam lah, seahorse, the dry seahorse, you mix a mix soup, you know, so it has medicinal uh, uh, benefits, you know, those kind of things. Okay, but seahorse is the man that give birth, yeah, okay. The males that give birth. So fertilization for the male is actually occur. The fertilization occur inside the male pouch. Yeah. 
All right. Okay, next. Okay, I need to explain the hemaproditism in fishes. Okay, as I mentioned just now, uh, this kind of characteristic is quite uh, rare in other, other animals. But it is very common in worms and insects. I think early on, I think, remember your, your I think those from diploma or those from, uh, I think during your form five, you learn about uh, worms, cacing tanah, remember? Ada, ada belajar pasal cacing tak? Belajar anatomi je rasanya. Okay, anatomy. That, that just, again, I'll give you an example. I think earlier on, uh, you, you're supposed to be exposed to different reproductive uh, methods of animals. Okay? Uh, tapi dalam ni saya cuma cover ikan. Tapi just to refresh you, worms, okay, cacing ya, yeah, cacing tanah, dia ada dua organ dalam satu badan. So, dua-dua organ ni, dua-dua dia punya testis dengan ovary function at the same time. Tapi kelas, tapi dia tak boleh keluarkan telur dia sendiri, keluarkan sperm untuk fertilize dia punya telur, dia guna sperm dia sendiri and fertilize dia punya telur. Berarti uh, dia dia release uh, it, it, yang worm ni keluarkan telur dia, lepas tu dia keluarkan sperm dia juga untuk fertilize. They do not happen like that, yeah. Okay, the worms need another worms. Okay, so in agreement, worms number one will release the eggs. Worms number two will release the sperm, or vice versa. Okay, atau yang satu, yang worm number two keluar eggs, worm number one keluar sperm. Dia tak boleh satu satu hewan tu membiak sendiri. Uh, Dia hasilkan sperm, dia hasilkan egg. Kalau boleh buat macam tu kan banyak senang. <laughs> okay? <laughs> banyak senang. Alright. So anyhow, uh, kalau ikan, we can do like that. It's easy. So we just need one fish. We release the the eggs. Then after that, release the sperm. So we can get uh, fry. We can get eggs or fertilize eggs. But it doesn't happen that one. Eh? Even fish, they have two gonads. They have testes and ovary in one body. They do not reproduce like that. Okay, okay. Different methods of reproduction reproduction by uh, zooplankton. Contohnya, uh, Daphnia, Moina. Okay, they we call it parthenogenesis, whereby the female replicate, they clone themselves. They uh, without a male, yeah, they can produce eggs, and the eggs can develop into young. Okay, they release the young. Okay, uh, this young is a cop. Apa kita kan duplicate copy of the mother. So whatever they produce will be all female. Is duplicate exact duplicate copy of the mother. Macam kata they clone lah. Tapi itu bukan ikan. Itu zooplankton. Ah, uh, they the method is they call parthenogenesis. Uh, this parthenogenesis is asexual, yeah? Okay, there are other sexual uh, reproduction also, whereby they need male. Okay, yeah? Okay, so I'm not talking about this uh, parthenogenesis. Okay, I just want to relate, sorry. Okay, I just want to relate uh, hemaprotitism in fish, okay? So uh, just now I mentioned in worms and insects is very common, but in vertebrates, uh, haiwan bertulang belakang, kejadian ada uh, berlakunya, I mean adanya testis dan ovary pada satu haiwan vertebrate adalah satu keganjilan, is abnormal, ya yeah? jarang dia uh, kalau berlaku itu adalah abnormal. Tapi untuk spesies ikan uh, ada beberapa spesies yang uh, apa tu yang terlibat uh, dengan pembiakan uh, uh, apa uh, pembiakan melalui proses uh, 
uh, hemaprodites, ya, yeah? hemaprodites dengan kaedah hemaprotism, hemaproditism ni, okay? So uh, example of fish yang saya dah bagi tadi ikan ikan siaka, okay? Ikan siaka, uh, <coughs> apa lagi tu? Ikan kerapu, ikan terubuk. Three example of fish, ya? Yeah? They have they are hemaprodites. Okay, class. But hemaprodites are divided into two in fish. Okay. One is synchronized hemaprodite. Another one is program hemaprodites. Okay. Program hemaprodites, yeah. Okay. Yeah, program hemaprodites. There are two types in fish, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, synchronized hemaprodites, meaning that the ovary and testes develop together. Okay, develop together. Okay, like in worms just now. So they need uh, they need one one fish to spawn the other. Meaning that, uh, macam mana kita? Dia boleh hasilkan uh, mana kita? Satu ikan tu bila dah matang, ikan yang yang sinkrona sama produk ni. Dia punya dia punya testis dengan dia punya ovary uh, matang pada peri, pada masa yang sama dia macam cacing tadi tapi dia tak boleh hasilkan telur dengan sperm dari satu badan yang sama dia kalau betina A eh, oh sorry ikan A eh, hasilkan X ikan B hasilkan sperm to in order to reproduce okay tapi dia aktif at the same time So usually spawning occurs in pairs. So example of fish is Serranus scriba. Okay, uh, this is also from uh, satu family dengan ikan siakap. Tapi ikan siakap dia punya pembiakan bukan sinkronis sama produk ya. Grupo bukan, terubu bukan. Okay, so this is fish very very apa kita kata uh, very unique. Okay, so sinkronis sama produk. Meaning that dia hasilkan sperm ada and dia ada dua gonad yang berkembang uh, dan aktif pada masa yang sama. Tapi dia perlu pasangan untuk uh, breeding. Ya, yeah? so this is synchronized. Meaning that dia synchronized lah ovary dengan testis uh, dia ber, berfungsi pada masa yang sama. Okay, okay. Next uh, is program for my products. Okay. In yang uh, example of fish I give you just now, your grouper, your siakap, and uh, terubuk, these are program hemi products. You all know about genetic, right? Okay. In <coughs> every species, they have the genetic makeup. Okay. If you study about genetic, every species they have genetic makeup. So you know that. Uh, certain fish, they will develop a certain pattern on the body, okay, they will develop certain characteristic, morphology, uh, so there is being, uh, is in their, inside their uh, genetic, inside the gene, okay, in the genetic, okay, so uh, this program hemaprodites is already being programmed in their gene, we do not change this one, dia dah macam kalau kita beli komputer kan, okay, komputer tu ada program lah, okay, so kita pula tak perlu susah kena install yang ini, kena install uh, Microsoft Word, kena install Excel, kena install uh, apa Acrobat, dia dah, dia dah program lah, so kita beli guna terus. So the same with fish, dia dah di program, dalam dia punya genetic makeup is already program, When you reach certain age, you mature as a male first. Then after that, you grow bigger. You reach certain age, you will your your uh, your testes will shrink, your ovary will develop, will expand. So you become a female. Okay. Uh, ini ini tak macam yang yang sajak tu ya, nor sajak, nor sajak tu lain, itu dia pergi buat pembedahan, alright, uh, ini tak melibatkan itu, itu abnormal sikit lah, alright, 
So, tapi ikan ni uh, memang dia ada gonad macam yang uh, synchronized hemoprotect tadi dia ada memang ada dua gonad dalam satu badan. Memang unik. Okay. And then uh, yang program hemoprotect ni dia akan berkembang usually at early stage when they reach maturity. Uh, this group of program hemoprotect uh, most of the time they turn in, they they will develop as a male first so male first meaning that they are protandrous okay program hemoprotite they are protandrous i give example the three example are this uh, apa tu uh, male first is uh, terubo you punya ikan terubo you punya grouper you punya siakap okay this protandrous okay Protogynous is female first, whereby when they reach the first maturity, the, in their program, they, the, the female gonad will develop first. Then after that, they, go, they grow bigger to certain size, they will the, the, male, the female gonad will shrink and the male gonad will take over, will expand. All right? Faham tak class? Okay? Protogynous is female first. In the program, they will develop matured into female first. Proto protandrous, they will uh, matured as male first. All right. Okay. So I give example also. So guilt help sleep rim is uh, another example for protandrous. Okay. Uh, protogynous, I don't have example. Yeah. Okay. But protandrous most commonly male first. Yeah. Male first, there is your siakap, your grouper, and also your terubo. All right, I want to show you here, this is what happened in uh, terubo or siakap or grouper uh, gonads. Okay, there will be male first, okay, so they have two gonads in the same body. So they will have ovary, which is very small. Can you, class, can you see the... My 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 mouse or not my pointer here? Can you see? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is this is the this is <coughs> sorry. This is the uh, the gonad. So there are two gonads here. Okay. This protandrous meaning is male first. So the ovary is very small. This is the ovary. Let, can you see that I'm pointing here? This is the ovary, and the rest of this are the testes the bigger portion are the testes because they are male first so the testes is developed first okay then as they age okay as they age they become bigger the testes will shrink the testes will shrink and slowly the ovary will expand can you see the ovary become almost, I mean, slightly bigger than the testes already. Finally, when they become female, okay, the ovary is so big, okay, the whole area here is the ovary. Can you see the testes down there? So small. Yeah? Can you see the testes down there? It's so small. So this is what happened. Yeah? Okay? And class, this is... Uh, uh, to my knowledge, yeah, to my knowledge, uh, the reference that I go through and uh, to my, uh, uh, my, my, the one that I've gone through, so far, this uh, hemoprotetism is only occur in marine fish and certain species of fish only. Certain species of marine fish, but it do not happen in freshwater fish, yeah? This do not happen in fresh water. So far, I do not know. Although some some farmer claim <coughs> claim <coughs> that they are, sorry sorry class my throat is very dry. Okay. Although when I was in Sarawak, I think few years back, I think to two thousand six or two thousand nine like that. Okay, uh, the farmer said, the farmer said, some farmer claim that kela can change sex. Kela can change sex. Okay, so 
our study, when we look at the gonadal development of the gla, that do not happen. Yeah. So if it happened, probably that due to is uh, is abnormal fish. Yeah, it's abnormal fish. All right. Okay, class. So they, this kind of characteristic is not being is is not found in freshwater fish, but in marine fish. But not all marine fish, yeah. Certain certain marine fish also. I I told you just now. All right. Okay. This is uh uh pating boa. My earlier work on pating boa. This is the male gonad. Can you see? The male gonad is slightly different as compared to the uh what you call that? Wait, uh, I can't believe zoom. Eh? Can't believe zoom. Wait, uh, I close the. Wait, kita nak. Okay, I. Bukan and yeah, and show. Good job, yeah. This is a male gonad. This is in patin boa, yeah? Okay? Uh, dia punya picture tak berapa clear. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, sekejap eh. Plus, can you see the gonads? The male gonad, the structure is the, dia punya, dia punya structure is different from those you, you, you dissect the tilapia. Still remember or not? Plus? Yes. Yeah, it's different. So different fish, they have different structure. But tilapia, uh, the the tilapia and most other fishes, I mean, uh, tilapia gonad, the male and female, they look almost the same. Only the female have eggs, then the male is will be whitish. But the the uh, the apa tu? Dia punya bentuk adalah sama. Okay. Tapi dalam catfish, okay, dalam catfish contohnya baung, keli dan juga patin ya, dia punya gonad bentuk testis ada lebih lainan berbanding dengan betina. This is the male, okay, dia nampak macam macam grab sikit, grab ada macam jejari, we call it finger like projection. And then this is in the male pat, patin ya, patin mua. Okay, sorry, sorry. So this is in the female. Okay, this is under female. Plus, can you see or not? Is it uh, using, you're looking at the zoom, right? That yes, I zoom yes. in. Nampak tak? Nampak, nampak, nampak. Nampak, ah? Okay, you can see this is the ovary uh, of the patin buah. So, it's almost similar to your tilapia. Am I right? Okay. Then, <clears throat> okay. Talking about gonad, okay. I want to touch a bit on the gonad or the ovary of uh, kela. kela. This is the gonad of the kela which I extracted in one of my field work. Okay. What can you tell me about the this uh, kela gonad, the ovary? Plus, what you can tell me about this? Sorry, let me enlarge a little bit more. Ayah. Okay. Can you look at the gonad? What can you tell me about this? Can you see? What do you see? Plus? Uh, what do you see? I see eggs. Yeah, oh, I see, see eggs. No. What? Do you see in the eggs? The size dia yeah, to jump yeah, to the nice. Yes, you got it right. Okay. Okay, class. This is sample from uh, apa tu, uh, wild brew stock. I mean, it's brew stock uh, whereby apa tu, wild brew stock lah. Okay, wild brew stock. So what you can see, definitely you can see big and small. Betul tak? 
Ada oh, luar, iya. tengok kat dalam tu ada besar, ada kecil. Okay? Okay, so so what actually happen is in the wild, uh, this kelah, they are seasonal breeder. Seasonal breeder meaning that uh, kalau breeding season, dia akan release eggs every two weeks. Okay, every two to three weeks macam tu, dia akan release. So you can, you you will, what will happen, the bigger eggs will mature first and will be released first by the fish. Then the the smaller eggs will develop and then become bigger. Then, uh, then it will be released two or three weeks later. Okay, okay, class. All right. All right. Okay, but this pokela, yeah, dia bukan keluar, dia bukan bila dia spawn, dia bukan release dia punya eggs sekaligus. So dia berperingkat peringkat. Okay, the bigger one will get released, will get spawned first. Okay, uh, uh, kita panggil, apa tu? Uh, ovulate. The word is ovulate. The bigger eggs will get ovulated. Ovulate, ovulation is the release of eggs from the fish body. Yeah? That is the term that you need to know, ovulation. Yeah, okay. But you can see here, for this, this is... Uh, can you see the picture of this uh, patin bua X here? The punya X yes. semua sama saiz kan? Tak ada besar kecil, besar kecil. Betul tak? Betul. Okay. So what happen, patin bua when they spawn, they will empty. They will totally release all the eggs. Dia tak ada, dia tak ada, tak ada kata, okay, minggu ni saya release half and after two weeks, I will release another half. That will not happen. So, class, you have to look at the species of fish. Contohnya, uh, tilapia. Tilapia, dia akan release one shot. Okay? Patin buah, they release one shot. Even keli, also they release one shot. But for kela, they go by stages. So, they will ovulate the bigger one first, the matured one first. Then the small one will develop after two weeks. Only they really they ovulate the the next batch, okay? Paham tak kelas? Okay, boleh ke? So you see the different, yeah? All right, okay. Kita kenapa dia jump di sana pula? All right, okay. Tadi mana? All right, this one. Class, can you see the next slide? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sini saya nak tunjuk. Ini adalah. Okay. This work is part of my PhD. I did my work on bau. Okay. Okay. Bau sekarang dia panggil. Apa nama bau yang baru? Ini bagus. Oh dulu kita orang panggil. Uh, Mrs. Nemurus. Sekarang dia panggil kalau tak silap. Hemi Bagus Nemurus. Okay. This is local bau in Malaysia. So. This is the, the red one is the kidney. Yeah? This is the kidney. Remember just now the diagram. This is the kidney. And this is the testis. Nampak tak? Dia punya bentuk testis bau tu lain sikit. Dia memanjang macam bentuk jejari. I make it bigger first. Huh? Let me end show. Hmm. Okay, kelas boleh nampak tak? Okay, kelas boleh nampak tak? Boleh. Okay, okay. so this is the kidney and this is the testis. Nampak tak bentuk dia tak macam tak macam kantung macam tu tapi dia bentuk jejari. This why I told you just now uh, the correct, the, the morphology of the testis of Catfish, there is curly, bau, patin are slightly different. Yeah, okay. So, just nak tunjuk je. And then, okay, the next I nak tunjuk is, sini ada satu lagi testis kat sini. This pasang, yeah. One is on the left, one is on the right. Okay, can you see this one? This is urinary bladder. 
nampak tak keduk nampak tak kedudukan urinary, urinary bladder tersebut okey this is kantung kencing ya pundi kencing okey where they store the urine then dia akan meet together dengan opening of the testes alright so that's why when i say <coughs> you need to release the urine you just press just above the genital papilla you just press okay then the urine will come out okay boleh 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 insyaallah rest the slide show Alright, the next uh, kita ada. Okay, class. This is immature testis. This is how many? Three months old. Three months old uh, bawang. Okay, I do gonadal study. Uh, I observe the gonadal development from hatchling until the rich maturity. They be able to produce sperm and eggs. Okay, that was my PhD part of not 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 all, but this is part of my PhD. Okay, gonadal development of bawang. So uh, to observe the gonad, the gonad, I do sampling of hatchling upon hatching every month, okay, until they reach maturity. So I have to look at the morphology of the gonad and also histology of the gonad. So you can see here, tak nampak apa pun. Actually, you can see a very fine thread-like tissue here. Uh, tapi kalau you tak biasa tengok, you tak akan kenal. Okay, so this is uh, three months old bawang. Yeah, oh, no, this is, they, I think this is uh, three months, yeah. It's a little bit bigger than my thumb. All right. Okay, if you look, uh, some of you may do some work on gonad histology next time. If you do histology, this is uh, histological slides, yeah. Okay, this early development of the gonad, whereby I, I dissect the fish, I remove the gonad, I prepare them into a glass slide, onto glass slide, and I do staining, and then after that, I observe under microscope. So this is observation is done through uh, light microscope, yeah? Okay, you can call, dissect, not dissecting, uh, compound microscope, after you, is, you make them into slide. So... I can see this early development of the gonad. This is, I don't know whether this is not developed yet. So they have primary germ cell. Okay, PG is primary germ cell. These are the one. These are the one that will develop into uh, uh, the, the sex organs. Yeah, I mean the, what you call that? The gametes later. This is primary germ cell. But at this point of time, we do not know whether it's male and female yet because it's not matured. Yeah, it's not matured. Okay, this is histology. Uh, this is black and white. I don't have a uh, color photo here. Okay, uh, this histology of the immature gonad. Okay, this is you. I this is a smaller fish. I take the whole gonad. So the whole gonad, one gonad, I can see just like that. Tak ada apa -apa. So this immature gonad. So this slightly, this is, uh, you can see slight development here. This is actually going to develop into female gonads. So this is female gonad at, uh, this one is at three months old, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Three months old, the female gonad. So this, can you see here? Uh, you can see the X follicle. This is follicle. This is, we don't call them uh, over male. This is X follicle. So they start with the small one, okay, the other stage one, stage two, stage three, yeah, X follicle, okay, the smaller one, they become bigger and bigger until they reach maturity, yeah, okay. So this is histology, okay, and then uh, this is on matured testes. As I mentioned just now, earlier on, you can see only the primary germ cell. These are the primary germ cell. Can you see my mouse or not, class? Can you see the mouse, that my pointer? Yes. Okay, these are primary germ cell. Okay, then later on, this one will develop into, into a primary spermatocyte, then secondary spermatocyte, then later on, it will mature into spermatozoa. Yeah, okay. So this is enlarged. 
the the front slide is already I zoom in, but uh, the the smaller the lowest viewing is like this. So you can see spermatozoa. Then I increase the how to say magnification. Then you can see uh, clearly. Then this is this is I think the highest magnification. So you can see the spermatozoa here. You can't even see the tail, the flagella. Okay. So this is primary spermatocyte. This is spermatozoa. This secondary spermatocyte. I will cover this one later on in uh, oogenesis and spermatogenesis. So this one just to show you some of the slides, histological slides. Okay. This is the breeding which I carried out uh, during my earlier career as a lecturer. I was in a uh, farm, okay. Uh, okay, I was in the no, this is not in farm. I was have I was I went to Tamalo and then this farmer they have uh, patin boa. So we actually go there and uh, to 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 spawn uh patin boa for them. Okay, and this one, you know, this thing. Uh, this this uh, floor is uh, this floor is at uh, is uh, at the floating cage. This is a uh, pondok pondok ni ni adalah atas sungai ya. So uh, we bring our tanks. Uh, we inject the fish the night before, and this is the time we strip the fish. Yeah, we strip the fish. All right. Okay. So these are the patin boa eggs. The eggs very small, okay. And then this is the patin boa sperm. Boleh nampak tak? I maybe I enlarge. I'm sorry. Ay, pujak, 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 pujak. And shut. Wait. Ah, okay. Can you see the eggs of patin boa? Plus, can you see? It's very tiny. <coughs> Ini nampak ni bulu ayam. You nampak eggs dia so tiny patin boa eggs. Okay, they are transparent color. Yeah. Okay, if they are whitish, mean they are not good eggs. Okay, and then if you see here, we have the male. Okay, this is the. Boleh nampak tak? I press the abdomen. Can you see the what? This is the white liquid oozing out from the genital papilla. Boleh nampak tak, class? Boleh, boleh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Class, uh, the difference with patin buah, patin buah is from the family Pangasidae. Okay. Uh, curly is claridae. Baung is uh, bagridae. Okay. For baung and curly, you cannot get this kind of milk. But from patin, you can easily get milk like this. You can, you no need to kill the male. Okay, you can strip the male, then they can produce sperm. Yeah, so you no need to kill the male. All right. So this is for patin boa lah. All right. Okay, class. Okay, class. Uh, this is part of my PhD also. Okay, I do, when you do PhD, you do various things about the reproductive, I mean, if you do FYP, you just do one small thing. But when you do PhD, you have to do more detail. So I do not, not only I look at the gonadal development, I also do, uh, I look at the sperm characteristic as well. Sperm characteristic. I look. This is uh, this is not histology. Yeah, this is uh, scanning electron microscope. The methods of uh, uh, preparation of this. Uh, apa tu? This 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 slide that you see here is using electron microscope. Electron microscopy. Yeah. So uh, gonad tu kita prepare. Kita tak kita open and then lepas tu kita proses guna few chemicals uh, kita tak guna mikrotom, mikrotom 
Lepas tu kita dah proses tu dan kita keringkan, kita letak atas kita panggil satu stage, so stuff dan kita lekat dalam situ. Lepas tu kita gold coated. Dia ada satu alat, kita masuk dalam alat tersebut, dia akan gold coated. Bila gold coated tersebut dan kita view under electron microscope. So how they actually the electron beam will will shoot onto the sample then the gold coating will give a vision of the whatever things that we are looking at so this is the viewing through electron microscope okay class this is sperm okay so uh, uh, what can you tell me about this sperm class look at the sperm this is inside the fish gonad the male gonad I mean, yeah, the male gonad. This is the testis. This is not the eggs, yeah? Can you see? The 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 sperm, they have the head, they have tail. You know, got head, got tail. What do you see here? Rowena? Uh, the head is right. Different size. Yeah, clever girl. Okay, different size. Thank you, Romina. Okay, so one glance you can see there are some head bigger, there are some head smaller. All right. Okay, this is not abnormal, yeah, class. This is you cannot call this abnormal. Okay, I tell you the story behind this big head and small head. Okay, this is related to the uh, to the reproduction. All right. You, uh, I think most of you have taken the using class genetic. Am I right? Am I right, Azlan? You who? Betul. Ah, yeah. Apa tadi? Ah, okay, Moaz. Okay, you have taken Doctor using class genetic class, betul tak? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ingat ada ada uh, apa kromosom ingat lagi tak? Dalam dalam apa tu uh, DNA ada kromosom kan? Ha uh -huh, betul. Ah, uh, okay. Then dia ada berapa pair ada semua? Ingat tak? Anyone? 23? Kalau ikut yang belajar dulu 23. Ya. Yeah. Different, different different species they have different numbers, okay? Okay, but for fish is 23. Okay, so uh, they have 23 pair of chromosome. Okay, okay, and this chromosome, okay, this chromosome, uh, they carry different uh, genetic uh, information. All right, okay, so dalam situ, dia ada uh, the most, the most uh, chromosome related to breeding is x and y x and y chromosome dalam 26 tu ada x and y chromosome okay class x and y chromosome is uh apa very important for breeding because x declared carry the genetic for x which is usually it come from female okay a female the, when you produce produce eggs i mean when uh, the female or in the female ovary they will produce you know bila dia buat apa tu kita kata uh, you know you tahu tak cell division the uh, chromosome division bila dia bagi dua dia bagi dua betul tak they all have they have 46 chromosome they come in pair tapi during the process of uh, dalam dalam gonad tu Bila dia dalam eugenesis atau dalam spermatogenesis, dia akan bagi dua. Berarti kalau dalam female tu uh, dia punya dia ada 46 total kan, so dia akan bagi dua. So uh, kalau female dia akan carry x x uh, one one x will carry one x, another x will another x will carry one x. But in male, what happen? Uh, siapa sini ada sini? 
اخبار زائم are you there what what is the chromosome that you carry i know so right now i just give an example eh? uh, don't take it different this is uh, to to give example okay what do you think you carry chromosome in your body your mom and father i know you carry xx you carry xy you get bukan xx ke <laughs> okay okay akbar zain x you get from who why you get from who so your genetic makeup is xy your chromosome right that make into make you into a male am i right okay rowena you carry what xx yeah so that make you a female correct or not yes yeah so your genetic makeup of female is xx so akbar zaim yours is xy that make you to, into a, uh, a male so it happened that uh uh apa tu uh uh apa tu the determining factor here is the y chromosome okay if i remove the y from from akbar zaim then i replace with an x akbar akbar zaim will become uh female female nama pun bukan zaim lagi okay uh, zaima maybe, Zaw maybe jadi zawiya ke all right okay okay class in relation to that x and y okay remember you see one big head sperm one um, some big head sperm some small head sperm this sperm they carry x and y okay the big head carry x sperm i mean x chromosome the small head you see the small head here it carry y chromosome all right so there are distinct population of sperm inside here the big head sperm are all the x chromosome the small head sperm are the y chromosome okay ini bukan abnormal okay ini bukan abnormal so i think uh, apa tu uh, this is bila kita buat breeding tu kita buat breeding untuk ikan bila kita mix tu kan kita hasilkan x So, uh, I mean, sorry, kita strip the fish, kita dapat eggs from the fish. Okay? So, all the eggs, they carry X. No matter what X are they, they only carry X chromosome. Betul tak? Tapi dalam jantan, dia punya sperm, sperm dia ada X, ada Y. Faham tak? Do you know where I'm getting to? Meaning that when we we fertilize the the eggs with the sperm we actually uh allowing either the male or female i mean the x chromosome to fertilize the x or the y chromosome to fertilize the x the x chromosome they carry only whatever eggs you have in the ovary is all x chromosome but the sperm they have two population there is y chromosome an x chromosome so if the small head if the small head fertilizes the eggs so it becomes akbar zain sorry akbar zain i use it it becomes a male fish understand or not if the big head sperm which carry the y from i'm sorry the x chromosome fertilizes the eggs then it become a female the offspring become a female So we have Rowena. Okay, Rowena. Okay, doctor. Okay. I'll give you an example. All right. So that's what happened. Okay. All right. So uh, with with this knowledge, long time ago, long time ago, ah, uh, with this knowledge, I think I don't know when, uh, for for uh, fertilization, uh, scientists use this information, okay, uh, to manipulate this information in a way uh, they make into good use okay uh, for those royalty they want to produce male air 
to inherit the throne. Okay, so uh, they they will uh, get scientists. I mean, they will collect the sperm and the eggs from the. Uh, I mean, through certain process lah, from the wife and the husband, because they want to make sure that they will have a boy when the mother give birth. So what they do is that they filter off all the eggs from eggs uh, uh, sperm, the eggs chromosome sperm. They filter off. Okay, they, you can actually just pin it. You put, you collect the sperm. You put in the test tube, you centrifuge. So the big head, because it's big and heavy, it will settle at the bottom. The small head will settle at the top because it is small and lighter. So it forms two layers. So what they do, they collect the top layer, use that population of sperm. The top layer is the one that carry Y chromosome. So they use that chromosome, I mean, sorry, that sperm to fertilize the female uh, eggs. So you get XY, that's why you get Akbar Zain. Betul tak? Plus? Betul, betul. Dapat Akbar. Betul. So you understand or not? Okay? Boleh, boleh. So this is, this is what you can observe. I relate to your study on reproduction. I'm sharing with you lah. Okay? So uh, the thing is that next time when you get married, do not blame your wife. If the baby come out, it's a girl. You want a boy so you can play football, okay? But then suddenly come out a female, uh, a girl, baby girl. So it's not your wife fault actually. So you have to depend on which sperm that fertilizes her eggs. If it's a Y sperm, that means you have a boy. So if an X sperm, then you will have a girl. All right, class? All right, okay. okay. So we have reached the end of the lecture for today. So, because I don't stop, so I will end earlier. All right? Any question? Any question so far? Hafizul tak masuk kelas, ha? Hafizul tak ada, ya? Doktor, how do we can treat the 40 minute when sebenarnya macam bila sperm tu kan, kita fertilize dengan eggs kan? Tapi dia ada uh, percentage untuk X to contaminate by the sperm sebab sperm tu kan dia fuse dengan urinary blood, bladder kan? Ha. Ada treatment ke untuk maksudnya nak treat daripada X to daripada contaminate? That's why I told you Ahmad Muaz to reduce this kind of uh, occurrence you need to release the urine first because you macam mana you nak treat lagi once they keluar bila you strip the egg i mean the sperm uh, the testes you 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 strip the 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 sperm from the male okay so kalau you tak release dia punya urine tu dia actually akan contaminate once they they come out dari lubang genital tu saja dah contaminate dah masih boleh pakai masih boleh pakai uh, tapi uh, kemungkinan you punya punya fertilization will be less. Okay? Amat muas? Okay, okay. Boleh? So, this why. Tapi many people, they don't care because eggs, uh, fish, they produce a lot of, uh, they produce a lot of, apa tu kata? Uh, fish, they, kejap, eh. I'm sorry. Okay? Fish produce a lot of eggs and sperm. So, Kalau few tak elok, tak okay saja. Tapi uh, kalau you nak optimize you punya fertilization, uh, because sperm ni, satu lagi karakteristik dia, once they get, uh, they come into contact with water, any liquid, any liquid outside of the gonad, this mean any liquid, the water ka, atau the feces, atau the urine, not only they will contaminate, they will activate the sperm. Remember, I told you just now, the lifespan of the sperm is only 60, uh, 1 to 2 minutes. So, they can uh, uh, reduce. They close, close, they don't activate. They don't campur dalam terlalu lagi. So, you lost few seconds there. Alright? Okay, class? Okay. Okay? Any other question? Hati Zoom, yeah?
Yes. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Tak, bila dia kongsi sama, meaning that uh, bila Okay, uh, that one I didn't study further but my belief is that it's the same. They're using the same ex uh, exit. Yeah, one genital papilla. They share the same exit. The genital papilla do not change. Sorry, they don't change. All right? No, 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 no. This is why sometimes when the fish send a uh, program hermaphrodite, they change sex. Okay? So, kita uh, based on size sometimes. So usually they will match it first as a male. Most of the fish that have my product, they will match it first as male. Then later when they grow bigger, they become female. Why so? Because the female, they need bigger size to accommodate the eggs. Yeah, that's why they become female when they are larger in size. All right, Abba Zain. Okay. Any more questions from the others? Ayuni? Actually sebenarnya ada tapi saya tak tahu lah soalan ni Tak apa, macam saya saya tertanya Dari segi kan doktor kata ikan kelah kan dia uh, Dia lepas riliskan egg dia tu kan berperingkat kan So uh, yeah. macam mana dia nak tahu telur yang rilis tu dah mature Okay, okay uh, Dia, dia ayu ni the, the thing is that you know our genetic makeup is dia Kita memang dah ada program dah So dia yang telur yang damage tu dia akan move towards the opening to towards the end of the uh, apa tu kita kata gonads towards the opening of the genital papilla so by the time bila dia ada, ikan ni dia very clever they will not ovulate until the eggs reach the the matured size dia memang macam tu it's already being programmed it's in the program Uh, during reproduction, that's why, okay, Ayuni, I give you example. A farmer asked me last time, okay, because yang waktu kita buat uh, uh, kelar, right? Dia kata, uh, bila dia tangkap kelar, uh, ikan tu baru mati, dia belah, dia nampak ada telur. Dia tanya saya, doktor, boleh tak kita guna telur untuk buat fertilization? Saya kata, tak boleh. Kenapa? Because, dia tak ovulate. So, the telur belum capai size yang dia dah sepatutnya capai untuk dia automatically release. Okay? Untuk dia ovulate. So, they need to reach certain size. Faham tak ini? Faham tak? Terima kasih. Uh, okay. Any more question? Ya, guess? No, doctor. Okay. Meng Song? Tak ada? Edzman? No, tak ada. Okay. Uh, so, if no question, uh, we'll see you this afternoon at 2. Alright? Okay? No need to bring that setting set today. Bring your lab cord. Okay? Uh, you're gonna, we're gonna do water quality and also you're gonna prepare time for your lovely culture. Uh, so today you're gonna be a bit dirty. You're gonna wash tank in the wet lab. Yeah, prepare your tank. Next week we're gonna put your fry in. So you will be doing larvae culture starting next week. Okay. So tanks need to be prepared this week. Okay. All right, class. All right, I see you. Thank 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 you.